most thought-provoking hour of the day. Dropping jewels and nuggets for the next 60 minutes. For us, for us, by us. By us. You're listening to the Hold Your Point Podcast. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, world? We are back again for another tantalizing Tuesday. We are the Hold Your Point podcast crew. Um, you know, this is the Hold Your Point platform where we talk about, um, you know, Christian aspects, uh, black life, black culture from a Christian perspective, millennial perspective, man. And, you know, we just try to give you give you points on life, uh, things that we touched on in life from a, a real perspective and tied into the Bible, man. But what's going on fellas man it's been it feels like it's been a little bit since we tapped in man how everybody doing yeah it's, it's definitely been a while man everything's <clears throat> copacetic on my end you know what I'm saying just just living you know living la vida loca you feel me just you know <laughs> but uh yeah man everything's good on my end man <clears throat> yeah nah I mean nah pretty much the same doing good doing good not La Vida, whatever that is, but uh, <laughs> but I am doing good. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> um, nah, this is a good week. Um, good week, you know. What I'm saying got got a few things done, and happy to happy to ch- ch- happy to uh, just chop it up with y'all fellas. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, just out. yeah, ain't, ain't ain't much, man. Same thing for me. Working. Uh, gonna be taking some time off from work and uh. Uh, next week, a couple of days. So, looking forward to that. You know, get a little R and R and recharge, and then uh, you know, back at it again afterwards. So, the boy on vacation. A little bit, man. A little bit. Vacation, staycation. <laughs> a vacation. A vacation. <laughs> oh man, what's going on, everybody? Just another blessed week. You know what I'm saying? Out here. Yeah, that, that's that Florida sun hit me like you know I got hit by Chris Rock. Rock. Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise than that, it's, it's all good, man. Hey, man, that's what's up, man. I I ain't gonna hold y'all, man. I've been I've been kind of uh, spent, man, this past week, and I, I just feel like like uh, like I, there's an old saying that goes like you're not useful unless you can be used, or you're useless if you can't be used. And you know, I I kind of just try to keep that in mind, but it's like I feel like damn everybody just wants something and it's like i need a break man like everybody needs something and it's like everywhere i turn someone calling my name and it's like i need to i need what david talking about dth talking about no i just need i need a vacation (laughs) but yeah man man, other than that yeah man other than that man i can't complain you know, I can't complain. I, I always just, you know, like I said, man, if you can't be used, you're useless. So, you know, I thank God for usability. Hmm. But um, I mean, we're gonna tap right in, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna delay the points. We got a real, real good one that we wanted to type into tonight. Uh, the topic of our discussion this evening is, you know, can you really be a child of a king and you broke? Like, can you, are, are we, you know, really operating in the way that we need to be as children of the Most High, being royalty, a royal priesthood, and we poor with a capital P, right? So, I mean, and, and I think it's a lot of layers to it. I know it can be a sensitive conversation for some folks who's been, uh, who's been in the mud for some years and they justifying it now and, you know, they don't, don't tell me about my circumstances, but. You know, I, I wanted to jump into it, man, just to kind of take get y'all take on it, man. So right off the bat, real quick, I wanted to ask y'all, like, why do y'all think, I, and I'm, I'm going to just dive in straight into the deep end, but why do y'all think the majority of members in any given congregation struggle? And, and when I say any given congregation, I mean, from my experience, from our collective experience, but why do y'all think that members of, of congregations struggle financially? You talking about seven day churches that we yeah, know from our from our experiences? Yeah, seven days, seven day if you got experience, whatever. Mm. Oh man, 
Yeah. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. That's a very good and big topic. Um, I'll start it off. Um, so I think the first thing I want to say is like, there's always been like when it comes to the church and like monetary gain and 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 putting a little bit of focus on that. There's always been some kind of aversion, some kind of uh, you no know, distancing themselves from people who say that you know we're Christians, but I'm also going to in the quote unquote get this bag or whatever. Um, but I just want to say like I think you know a lot of people allude to you know scriptures in the Bible that talk about you know wealth and uh, maybe in a negative light so that so then the, the the church the church then may in that in that sense some churches not all not I don't want to, I don't want to say all but some churches may uh may 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 put it in a sense that you know you have to kind of maybe give your all to you know spiritual aspects and if you put any time and effort and energy into monetary gain then that's that's a that's a worldly perspective that's a secular perspective but you know you know i i would like to i I like to offer a different perspective you know that you know there's a lot of good examples in the bible of people who are wealthy and i'll just leave it at that yeah 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 i'm 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 gonna pick it up where you left it off leave uh leviathan honestly i'm not gonna try to go too deep with it in the beginning but uh, you know money is is a tool that few people learn how to master it's just like knowing how to uh, turn a wrench or or knowing how to dribble a ball you you gotta know how to master it and the best way to master it is knowing what you're good at right and honestly a lot, a lot of people <clears throat> neglect to 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 tap into what they're good at you know it, it's as simple as that man it's just a lack of being like you said earlier uh fortunato a lack of being valuable right mm-hmm. so you you touched on that you you're pulled every which way boom 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 but by you being pulled that means dollar bills are able to, you know what i'm saying dollar bills are able to come because because you you are needed here you're needed there and that's the issue like we a lot of church people just don't know how to master money and the thing is like people will think like Oh, you know, you, you know, people just lost after money and blah blah. People who's wealthy and rich, they ain't lost it after money. Like, well, I mean, some people are, but for the most majority of them, they, you know, these guys are just regular shirt, regular pants, whatever. They they ain't tripping on money like that because it's something that they're accustomed to. It's just like a, a a regular old thing to them now. You know what I'm saying? Like an old girlfriend now to them. So that's that's my opinion of it, man. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I think. I think what is um you gotta define two different words with it. There's riches and there's wealth. Um, you know, what's your definition with riches? I think riches is like the earthly things, what we define as riches, and then there's also wealth, is which is wealth. You could be wealth and be a gift from God type wealth. And it's it's the fact that it's what you define as a person as success, not only success, but what is riches. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a lot of time, um, you know we we trying to go get the bag and chase the money out here when you know that's not what really god god wants for us you know saying he wants us to be able to to be able to inherit things in a different way as far as like um not monetary wise you know what i'm saying because that's what we seek because that's what we're trained we're trained to get up you know work a nine to five work for that money and then you know what i'm saying next you know that's routine and as dj said and leviathan said money money is a tool bro like it is, it's, you know, you play the game Monopoly, you use money to make money, but that's in a sense, what not what God wants us to do is it's the sense that a lot, of, a lot of the debt that we have is brought upon ourselves, believe it or not. Um, and that's my opinion. I feel like, you know, I, and I say that wholeheartedly, you know, I can't say like, oh, that's brought upon ourselves, but us as humans and as, as child of God, we create a lot of the debt that we're in, you know, because of, you know, what our eyes see and what we want and yearn for. Yes, sir. Yeah, for sure. I just, to add on to that, I think it's the probably the two biggest pieces of it as far as why folks in the church that we're accustomed to don't really have money like that is a combination of some biblical teachings and traditions as Leviathan was talking about, kind of somewhat denigrating uh, having wealth and then also, as DJ was saying as well, just not knowing 
how to manage money, how to accumulate it, what to do when you do get it. Um, not having that education is a major, major stumbling block for a lot of folks. And so, I mean, I think that contributes to the to to what we see for the most part. Um, but there's other factors that go into that as well. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think like I mean, as it's, it's been rightfully said that like there's let's keep it a buck. Like you know, the, the church demonizes what we don't fully understand, and you know whether whether there's there's support from it from a biblical sense or whether it's not supported. Like if it's not understood from a leadership standpoint, it's demonized. And, you know, and I mean, we can clearly see the deficiencies in some of our groups. Like, look how many groups have started building funds from like 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, for for over a decade, they can't finish a building where yet, you know, with some of these other denominations within like six months, they have a campus, uh, a whole, um, you know, a, a daycare and everything else attached where it's not depending on tithes and offering anymore. And now the church has a, a source of income to support itself. But it's like, you know, on, on our side, we see the deficiencies. Like, you know, I, I don't know how many people, how many of y'all like really tapped into like, you know, the board or like just the numbers behind the church. But I mean, like, it's no secret. Like there's like 10% of the church on any given time who's paying like their full tithes. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of different elements to it, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna hit it all one time. I wanted to ask y'all too, though. What does, what do, what do y'all think the word says about living in debt? Mm. Well, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you think about it, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, people a lot of times allude to the, uh, the Our Father's Prayer, and it has that line in there where it says, you know, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or in that, in this other translations, of course, that's what I remember as. Um, <clears throat> but then there's other ones where you know, it talks about in Psalm 30, in, in Psalms and stuff, where you're like the wicked should borrow and and they, they should not repay, like people like that. It talks about people like them. Um, there's all kind of examples in the Bible where I think you know debt is not considered a good thing. Um, where there's debt with where. where um, Debt is not something that is 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 welcomed when it comes to Christian living. You should not go through this life owing people things and owing people yeah. that, or taking things that you know you cannot repay. You know, you're taking things you know that you can't give back. Um, yeah. It's not a Christian practice. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll say one scripture that comes to mind that I reference all the time: "You should be the lender and not the borrower." I mm. mean, that's 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 the one that i know for sure that i say all the time man and you know do, do we follow that i don't know but i'm gonna let y'all let y'all say the rest i think mm -hmm. if you're living in debt perpetually you know especially here in the states um it, this really is the land of opportunity like we know that things are not perfect here they're not perfect anywhere but we see immigrants coming from countries, you know, they're giving up their lives to come over here. Like they're uh, clawing to get into this country because of the opportunities that are here that they don't get in their home country. So if you're living in debt, um, I think that can be, not always, sometimes you fall on hard times, there's different situations. Sometimes it's uh, situations you're born into that, you know, you had nothing to do with. But a lot of times, it's it's poor decision making and and it's it's that mixed with a a lack of desire to work hard and i think that's one of the things that the bible is staunchly against because there's in proverbs it talks about uh look at the uh you know the ant how it works in the winter time to store up for itself um so that it has enough to eat but the, what is it, the grasshopper, I think, that is, uh, you know, not doing the same things to, to be ready. So people, people just want, a lot of people just want to pass, man. They just, they just want to get rich quick. And the Bible talks about that as well, like get rich quick schemes. That's not really something that is uh, supposed to be happening. So 
you know, people that are in debt, they just, I think it's a mind shift. A mind shift yeah. has to occur. Yo, it's funny you say that. Mike Brown, you, you was going to say something? No, bro, go ahead. Okay, okay. It's funny you said that, D, because um, I, I was looking at Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Um, if y'all don't mind, I can read it off. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> It says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commandments I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth, right? And and so when I read that, I I just assumed that a lot of Christians will read this be like, okay, if I follow the Ten Commandments, God said he's going to put me above all the earth and I'm going to have everything that I need. And, you know, it. The, the way I see it, it says here, if you obey all his commandments and not just the Ten Commandments, you know, one of his commandments was to be fruitful and multiply. Right. And a lot of people don't don't think of that. That's that's a commandment. That's something that he told the people to do. And and honestly, it's, it's like, OK, you obey the Ten Commandments. OK, your, your soul and your afterlife is going to be cool. But on Earth, you might be struggling. Right. <laughs> because you didn't do what you're supposed to do news flash um hey i'm sorry you know what i'm saying so i thought that was something cool i yeah. share most definitely i mean it it says what uh blesses the poor because your your riches are in the kingdom something like that and and the fact that i i feel like hey you we supposed to we supposed to depend on god in all situations whether that's um poor or you know rich you know what i'm saying and it, it a lot of people, they, I think, all right, what's the word? They said your eye too green when your eyes too green. A lot of people live without their, without their, with, I'm sorry, with not in their means. And they, you know, spend a little bit more uh, and spend because yes. they, they may see what I the next red. man or the two just may have next door. So like, oh, yeah, it, oh, eye too red, whatever color the eye is, you know, you know it's the fact that they, they, they go, yeah. <laughs> They going way beyond their means, and and that's not what God wants, man. You know what I'm saying? Just because you know the Jetsons got this and you don't have this, you're like, oh, that just come out. Maybe I need to get me something like that. When you you know the broom that you have, sweet better than the vacuum that so you know. I'm just saying, you know, it's the fact that we're over leveraging ourselves when it comes to money. Some, you know, what I'm saying some people. So debt, debt is you know, brought upon ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And it's just human nature, you know what I'm saying? It's just human nature. You're going to always want what the next man has, you know, when God wants us to be content with what we have. Oh, I just, I just want to get clarification for you, Uh so you're, so you're saying, Mike, we should just live, um, like, not try to go above our means and just kind of... Nah, you know, it, nah, not that. In a sense, what I'm trying to say is like, all right, a lot of times what we have is, all right, I feel like we should always strive for better. Strive for better. But in a sense, don't do it in a sense of luxury strives. I feel like as, as um, God may bless us and he's going to bless us with what is needed. But at the same time, don't, if you know that you don't need that extra, then don't go for the extra. You know what I'm saying? And that's just my sense. Yeah, that's that is my two piece. Whatever eye or color you got in your eyes is, you know what I'm saying? keep it what you're supposed to be at and the fact that you know don't in a sense like wow you know i know for a fact that i want this but maybe i can uh you know borrow this or i can you know maybe credit this because i like credit credit is the number one demon <laughs> in this in this country i feel like because there's a lot of people don't have good credit i mean so, i feel you but I, I feel i feel like hold on hold on dth because i've been waiting I feel like that's Itching. still like the narrative. I feel like that's still the narrative. Like a lot of a majority of our people has been taken, like not to live above your means, and then by doing so, like you fall into a comfort of just you know making sure you have the, your needs and you don't have any overflow. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, and, and we'll get into it, but I truly believe that that we're not called to just like barely get by. Like we're called to live in a state of overflow. Like when we're doing the things that we need to do. Like we should always have our needs met and have extra. Like whether we need to help somebody else out or, or whatever, like we should we should never be just like, but we just about made it. Like it like if well, you know, and I'll hold back. But one of the one of the verses I wanted to read real quick, DTH, before I come to you, 
It says Romans 13, 7, right? It says pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to who respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed, right? And I'm going to throw a question in DTH and I want you to answer it after you you, you uh, spin your take. But, you know, we talking about debt. But on the flip side, all of us is aware of the term other people's money, right? And when it comes to business, they tell you what? That is, it's it's great to be able to build and work with and, and you know, to, to e evolve your situations with other people's money, OPM. So is there a level to debt that can be positive or are we saying that all debt across the board, according to the Bible definition, should be ruled as bad? Hmm. I mean, well, when you put it like that, there is there is such a thing as debt financing, right, versus equity financing. So when you put it that way, there's there can I think there can be good debt and bad debt, right? But it again, it kind of goes back to having the right education and knowing exactly what it is you're going to do with that, because some people have stupid debt i'll call it right mm -hmm. like if you've been uh like w w what's what's the example y'all remember uh uh that movie baby boy with uh 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 bing rames and he said you got the guns and the butter right yeah. so some people go into debt for the butter which is clothes cars jewelry all the stuff that don't mean anything <laughs> once you got it right <laughs> but the guns that resonated with dta boy. hey man hey that's one of my favorite movies man you can't tell me nothing about that but um uh you know accumulating certain assets that will appreciate with value i'm almost quoting it right now from the movie but it's really true like certain uh purchases that you make may have you in debt for a period of time but um as long as it's something that again will appreciate with value or something that you can flip um there's a lot of people who are you know making uh, a whole living off of real estate and stuff like that like these people know what to do with their money so i wouldn't say being in debt always is entirely bad i don't think it's something you want to stay in for long though because for the long term you don't want to have a a, a, neg a net negative uh, uh, net worth. You want to be positive, meaning your assets outweighing your your liabilities. But um, you know, education is really the key. Like I've been saying, people have to know. And even you know, if, 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 I don't know if y'all saw Florida. They recently just passed the law that um, in in the state high schools they have to have mandatory uh, financial literacy courses, which I think is a, that, is a great, well, yeah. a big a big deal man like kids need that children need that coming up you know it would have been great for that to have been around you know back in our time because we wouldn't have to seek these things out on our own but um that's that's really the big thing but i wanted to say uh you know i think all of us kind of see there's there's good to it right but is it possible that we could desire too much or or does God truly, do you think God truly does want us to live uh, in abundance? Because I would, as you were saying a little while ago, Fortunato, you were saying, you know, just to be breaking even, just to be getting by, right? I don't think that's where we need to be either. But I also don't know if being in abundance is necessarily good either because, you know, there's... And this is probably where some of the the thinking comes from some of the older folks um like there's there's scriptures everyone's throwing out scriptures let me throw out one too right so we know matthew 6 24 which is no one can serve two masters right because he's gonna mm -hmm. love one and hate the other you can't serve god and money i think right. there's a potential for people to chase the money too much and maybe lose their way and i think that's what some people are afraid of so I'm, i guess how is it that we can still pursue wealth without getting caught up with everything that comes with it if you know what i'm trying now, to say yeah no nah, i'm sorry let me let me jump in real quick uh dh definitely that last question something i was definitely thinking on is like 
what is the balance? I think someone alluded to it earlier. I think it was Mike Brown. Like, what is that kind of like that balance between wanting more, like, and 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 knowing when is enough? You know, there's always there's always going to be more out there. There's only going to be someone out there who has something better. So it's like, when is when is your content? But then also, my question was also like, where does that come into like with ambition? Like, you know, we all should strive for things. We all should try to be better but when does that become too much but i'm gonna reverse it back a little bit back to to, to uh fortunato's question when it came to uh, like the debt part and like the um like is there anything like good debt or bad debt kind of question and i just wanted to get to like there's definitely a good debt and i wouldn't even call it good debt. i'd call it more investment um there's definitely things in this life where you put something into it and you have to take you know you have to take something out of you or take 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 something out of you know energy life whatever um this earth which is more money and uh, monetary in this instance and you grow it you know what i'm saying you know the bible talks in second corinthians 9 verse 6 everyone's throwing scriptures now the point is whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever mm -hmm. sows bountifully will also reap bountifully you know what i'm saying there's is there's definitely instances where you have to where you have to put a lot of stuff into it. and you can get stuff out of it. It's not really debt in that sense. It's more of an investment. Um, so, but, but that question was very good earlier. I definitely got to touch on it. Where is that balance between wanting more and ambition? But go ahead, Fortunato. There's, 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 a there's a verse for you. There's a verse that says, and I don't remember who said it, but it says, um, to make me not too rich where I forget you, uh, neither too poor where I curse you. So mm -hmm. there's there's a balance. I, I think there's a balance into like making sure that we have content within ourselves because let's look at Joseph, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Joseph was was a man who got when he got put into a position, like um I forgot who but he literally he was in charge of everything, like you know, at some point. And I mean, could some people have said that he had too much? He could have got drunken by it. Who knows? But God blessed him accordingly. Look at Job, who went through so much, but then at the end, God gave him a double portion. Like right. it's not a lot. It's only a lot to people who looking at you and examining your situation. Like God is the creator of all things. Like He gives us a portion. Like there's there's the portion that He gave to Job. I don't think God looked at it and said, "Well, this is a lot," but you know, I think you can you can manage it. I guess a portion that he gave to him because he felt that it was he was worthy of it. So I mean, I feel like even if we if someone strike and you make a hundred million dollars, like as long as you have contentment within yourself, that's why we see like a lot of times with these these athletes, entertainers, and and whatever, like they make all this money, but they don't have no peace. Like they don't mm. have no like no joy for real because it's like the money was the driving force. Now they got the money. Now it's like well. I mean, it, I guess it really wasn't the money. And I, I'll make I make this example for you, right? And I'll the mic real quick. Like my thing was back in the day, I'm not gonna hold you. Like my my upbringing, you know, jewelry was kind of demonized more so on like you know, um, just it just wasn't like what we what we was Still into, is. right? Still is, and yeah. so like, and so like in, in my mind, because like it was something that I didn't have a real answer to, like it became like a fixation like i didn't understand why it was a bad thing so i wanted it more and it wasn't until like i was able to purchase jewelry for myself now it's like like man most of the time i don't even wear this crap when i go outside or it just be aggravating like but it's like it wasn't something i realized until i was able to obtain it to realize like this isn't all i thought it was so it's the same thing like with like just finance and with you know just abundance like it's only a big deal to people who don't got it and people who don't yeah. have real content yeah yeah um honestly man i you know like i said i, I touched on this earlier you know god want us to have dominion and conquer the earth right i i honestly think man if you're just scraping by you're you're not you're not taking advantage of what god blessed you to have like we're not going to heaven this realm is ours this earth is ours why would you not try to grab everything that God has for you? You know, um, I'm, I'm also going to touch on this here. You know, 
okay so when i say gold what comes to mind when i say gold shiny metal xau jewelry <laughs> things of value yeah, jewelry right things of value come on come a little deeper okay things of value i i, I like that jewelry okay um but yeah 400 things of value do y'all ever like stop and wonder like why is gold so valuable in the earth right now because people make Weird. it but just like diamonds diamonds don't have no real real value to it it's just what people put value on it as yeah but okay so I personally think, and I actually heard this from somebody, but it made me think. We're just like, the reason why gold is so valuable is because it's mentioned in the Bible as being valuable. There's really no other reasons as to why I, that I can think of is why it's valuable. And, you know, in the Bible, gold is mentioned 470, 417 times in the Bible. Now, there's a verse that I want to read, which is Exodus 28, verse 36. Hold Exodus on. You, you counted all of those? <laughs> <laughs> Show us 417? It's, well, I just, Googled, I just Googled it real quick. Oh, I got you. All right. But um, uh, so Exodus, <laughs> Exodus 28, verse 36 reads, make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it holy to the Lord right so like i said gold is something that's valuable and that's what that's what that's that's what god desires for us is look on a plate they engraved in it holy to the lord so it's something that god wants us to have he wants us to have dominion he wants us to have the riches because the thing is when you have money as christian people you can help other people you can't help nobody if you just scraping by who you gonna help the people yeah, in, so. in africa the people that's in these other countries that's starving that can use a help of a christian man but the christian man ain't got no money so it should be it should be our duty to try to become rich like i'm i'm, I'm a humble guy man like i don't wear no jewelry i would wear it but i'm humble there's only so much money that i actually need i probably would be cool you know well it'll probably be different once i start having kids but i'll probably be cool with like you know what i'm saying Two hundred, three hundred thousand. You feel me? I'll be cool. I'll probably be cool with them. Then the rest of that is just like, all right, who can I bless now? Like, you know, what I'm saying, I got money. I can help people. You know, what I'm saying, I could be more of an evangelist to people. So that's that's the reason why I'm like, bro. And then the thing is, I always I say this probably once a week. It's like everybody say they want to be comfortable, but they don't never factor in inflation, right? See the way gas prices are going up. Now everybody just like, oh wait, they're in the gas right But everybody used to say, like, oh, I want to live comfortable. What does that even mean? What if gas prices shoot up to $20 a, 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 a you know what I'm saying? A gallon. But but you want to be know it. <laughs> so so the way I see it, man, God said, have dominion and conquer this earth. Where you guys, this is what I gave you. You're not going to heaven. This is what I gave you. So, so why are you going to let the one that, that doesn't serve me take everything that I gave to you? I gave this to you, and you're going to let them conquer it? Come on, man. But do you think that still applies today? You yeah. Think you think so? 100%. Everything well, that I say, everything that I said, man, it, it applies today, man. Like, you so know. then, so, so Matthew 19, 24, right? He, he says, and again, I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, right? Than for mm -hmm. a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. So, so based on, on that, we know, and he was talking to a rich man. He said, you know, what do I, what do I have to do to, to enter the kingdom? Cause I've, I've, and then Jesus told him, keep the commandments. And he's like, I, I honor my father, and my mother. I, I, I don't murder. I don't steal. I've done all these things since I was a kid. And then Jesus told him, go and sell all your possessions and and follow me mm -hmm. and then he walked away sad and because he had a lot and yeah. so and so that's when jesus said it's, it's going to be hard for rich people to enter the kingdom so does that does mean more yeah th yeah so then does that mean that we're not really supposed to be you know having uh you know again abundance like i guess no. excessive wealth no i don't agree and even in that example like he he knew what this man's fallacies was so that's why he picked on it to say okay well since x y and z is so easy for you go
go and sell what you have because he knew what was in his heart already. So the, the quote unquote for a rich man is not considering someone who's living in the principles of God and have an abundant life because Job again was a rich man in context of having things. Uh, uh, um, 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 the examples that we've drawn on already, people were rich because they, a lot of most of the leaders, most of, of God's leaders, especially in the Old Testament, were rich men. Abraham and Isaac, but, for sure. But yeah. the context, the context, I believe, in what was being used in the New Testament is labeling people as rich people versus like, OK, these are the rich people and they're not going to make it in because they focus on their money. But like if I mean, you know, and that's just my take on it. Yeah, yeah the thing is, I mean, like, hey, oh my bad, my bad, my bad. No, no, I was just, I was gonna ask the question, like, what, what's riches? Like, what is riches to you know? Because, all right, think about it. We live in America where we think luxury is riches, right? But you got people in other countries that if they, they just, they happy with, all right. We saying uh, we should live abundantly, and we should live, you know, we shouldn't live without our means and stuff like that. There's other people in other countries that have a different different definition of riches. That's very true. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, just the fact that the fact that I can get out and you know go and walk to my car and drive to a destination, that's considered riches. Some people don't have that luxury in other countries. So it, the, the thing is, you guys said it earlier. Somebody said it earlier. I think it was you, DJ, or uh, Mr. Levi. It's what we as people put value on. We as people, and we define what is riches. You know what I'm saying? You take a dollar bill, it ain't nothing but a piece of paper. Do you know the Chinese is the one that invented money? It was a Chinese, it was a rich empire. And he said that this is the new way of exchanging currency. Because back in the days, in order for somebody to receive something, it was something called the barter system. Barter system. I give you yeah. what I have. Yeah, I give you what I have, and you give me what you have, and we trade. We we both good, you know. Yeah, you sacrificing something that you have, but at the same time, it's something that I see something that you have that I need. Now all of a sudden, somebody comes in and they're putting a piece of value on a paper. You know what I'm saying? So in other countries, it's in our America, money is what we chase. In other countries and other places, people chase other things. And they put that as something that's about, you know what I'm saying? Like goats or stocks or what is, uh, wait, was it wasn't, um, it was oil or, um, it was oil. What else was back in the days? Um, it was silk. Those were things of value. Yeah, a lot of natural resources. Yeah. So it wasn't huge. until a couple, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't until like a couple of centuries ago is where money is what people are now putting the value on, you know? Okay. Yeah, no, nah, Mike Brown yeah. hit it on the head. Oh, my bad, you done? Oh, yeah, no, nah, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was saying, uh, no, nah, I think you hit it on the head a lot, a lot and a lot of us have been kind of hitting it, where it's, it really comes down to our minds. It really comes down to your mindset on a lot of this stuff, on a lot of this stuff. It really comes down to where you put your focus, where you put your mind. Like, fortunately, I'm going to challenge you a little bit on your, on your scripture that, you know, um, it's easier for, you know, we say that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But why is that? There's a reason for that. I mean, the, and part of it is that we have to look at it as like a lot of rich people, they tend to, they tend to put their focus on the riches or their, all their, all their needs will come from their, you know, from their, from their, from their riches. And it's really just all their, it's really just where your focus is. You can be rich and not put all your focus on your riches in terms of that's not the solution to all your problems, or you can be someone who's rich. And if that's your solution to every problem, you want to run to your riches, you want to run to your money, you want to run to your money. And God is never really the answer that then that's a problem. And, but you could be poor, like I said, and still have that same problem. If you look at it, you could be poor and still think money is my solution to all my problems. Money is a solution to everything that I got going on. And you still going up, and you you still have that same sin as the rich man. So it really comes yeah, down to your mindset. They said, so "What money like, is the root of all evil?" Hey, no, the love of money. The love of it's money the root of, is the root of yeah. all evil. It's almost yeah, like, let me just. It's almost like how the. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna add real quick onto what Leviathan said because 
First Timothy 6, 17 and 18 says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all that we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and, gener and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. So I think with that, it shows us that having the wealth or pursuing the wealth, the end goal I think is what can determine your success, whether or not you're going to achieve it. Because, well, it, it can play a part because there's some folks who do get wealthy and are still not, you know, following God. But um, the I think the desire should be to share with others. And I think DJ highlighted that a while ago. Like, if you're pursuing that so that you can help others, that's really a great place where your heart should be. But if it's only about yourself and how many Jordans or Gucci bags or whatever it is that you want to buy, then that's really not a good reason in the eyes of God to pursue that those riches. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's almost like how they were scoffing at like the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they were referred to as the religious people, right? It's because that's where their focus was at. So they, oh, well, we're going to label them that. So it's almost like, it's like, sarcasm almost like you know that they're not religious for real but they're gonna put on like they're religious. so we gonna label them the religious people like these people like ain't focused on helping others for real they focused on their money and their their uh, you know having it so we're gonna label them okay, those are rich people over there because they're not doing the things what we're supposed to be doing with finances and stuff like that but i mean i wanted to ask y'all too like do y'all think the state of our finances reflect alignment or imbalance with principles the Bible has on finance? 100%. I, I'll say 100%. Kind of just based on what, what you know, the verses I read. I, I know they read some different verses, but based on what the what the verse, I'm going to keep touching on this, man. Like, you, we are all here on an assignment. We are all here to do something great on this earth. And the thing is, when you do something great, Money just has a magically, uh, mat it just comes to you magically, right? When you, when you are doing something that you're supposed to be doing. So 100%, if, if you're not having dominion and doing the things that God planted in you to be great, and you're that's the reason why you out here struggling, that's the reason why you out here broke. Now, the, th the thing is, like, all right, <laughs> maybe not, <laughs> maybe you're not gonna be a millionaire or whatever, maybe you know. That's not in the cards for you. Maybe you're just an amazing school teacher, and you know that's that's you know that, that salary is not a whole lot of money. But but you're gonna get you're gonna get these blessings that just come, kind of come out of nowhere. Maybe some parents is like, I'm so glad you sold it to my kid, teaching him uh, 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 fifth grade math. Here's uh, five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? So you'll just start to get these these blessings other than your check. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. but are blessings always monetary? No, no, sir. No, 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 no. So then, is it possible that it's not God's plan for a specific person to attain a certain level of of wealth? Could that be possible? Because I'm just thinking about Paul as an example, right? We know about the thorn in his side, right, where he talked about mm -hmm. praying to God to remove this thing for him three separate times. Now, some people try to figure out what it is. The Bible's not really explicit on what it was, but he had something that was impeding him to a degree. Um, but after praying about it, God told him, you know, I'm not going to take it out. And, you know, it could be God knew if I, if I take this out, you know, Paul's not going to be Paul anymore. Paul might have a different mindset and, and think he can do whatever, right? And maybe it was a way to keep him humble. Could it be that it's not in the cards for somebody to get too high while you may while you may be in pursuit of something if god says i'm going to provide you what you need maybe a little bit more but i'm not going to give you a whole lot and that's the way i want that's my plan for you like is that something that we would be okay with if if we got that revelation from god or you know because i think for me i think not you know again i think the mindset is important i think we should be striving should be although there is a point because there is a verse that says godliness with contentment is great gain as well. But you should not be lazy. Um, but it may not be in the cards for you to get a whole lot. And maybe that's that's okay with God. 
Philippians 4 19 says, and just to add to it, it, it does say that you know God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So it was a question I skipped over because I felt like we touched it already, but DTH brought it back. And so I, I was thinking, like, do we does the word give us guarantees on our needs being met? And you know, the overflow is just extra. We got to work for it. But God, if we if we align ourselves with the principles, our needs will be met. Anything more than that, we got to work for on our own. No, I mm -mm. I kind of don't agree with that, man. Because just I, I kind of actually touched on that a little bit, where like, you know, if you if you abide by the laws that he placed, I mean, the, the afterlife, you're gonna be cool. You're gonna be straight. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying here on earth is there's no guarantee of what's gonna happen. I mean, you know, that's the kind of the way that I see it, man, because the, the the scriptures that allude to you know what you're supposed to actually do to get riches on earth. So well, the Bible also says though, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, right? And this righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things will be added unto you. So that's talking about again focus meaning you're not primarily pursuing earthly things but when you pursue the things of god everything else that you need is going to be supplied like fortunato saying and then there's also the scripture that says store up for yourselves treasures in heaven right not here on earth where wrath and must wrath and uh i'm sorry moth and rust <laughs> destroy so um while we are here and we should do everything we can to, you know, try to live a comfortable life. I don't think we need to be destitute or uh, struggling by any means. But at the end of the day, this earth is going to pass away, right? Guys, or Jesus will return and um, make it all new. Um, it says to store for yourself treasures in heaven. And so I think that's really what our focus has to be about. And as we do that, you know, other things will come and, and will be uh, made whole. So do y'all think there's a difference between being broke and being poor? Mm. I don't think so. They sound like synonyms to me. I was going to say yeah, that. Same. The only thing I could think of is is if is is some some, some people say like you know being poor is a mindset and and, and being broke yeah. is more just like your situation. Um, I want to say like maybe if you want to like differentiate it that way, like there is there is a a, a way you can can that's be it. thinking that's the answer right there. That's yeah, it. I think I think there is a way you can operate in your life where we, that can cause you to be perpetually broke, and I guess that's considered poor. But you can hit a rough patch in your life and be broke at one point. But you're working to get better, and then you get out of that, and you know that's how life goes. But I think I mean, there's a difference in that sense. Yeah, you know, Proverbs, Proverbs um, ten verse four says he becomes poor who deals with the slack hand, mm. but the hand of the mm. diligent makes rich. I like so, that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about, like you guys keep saying, it's, all right, you know what? Let me tell you, I, re I read this book, um, is uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And hey, it's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, you know, a lot of it is is common you know, knowledge, what we know, but you had a dad that was pretty much worship money by trying to chase it, and you had a dad that used money to try to get more money. You know what I'm saying? And it's it, that, that's the synopsis kind of what the book is about. So it's, it's it starts up with here. Money money attracts money is attracted to the, the people who try to chase it. Money's gonna run away from you. Money attracts you know what I'm money. Saying? <laughs> money attracts money. You know what I mean? Like I look, I, I'm a firm believer as a hundred percent of your earned income must be invested. You know, I know you can't do it, and that's just that's just the same. But the thing is, like you guys have been saying this the whole box, the whole episode is that you know what I'm saying you have to be able to know how to use it, and once you know how to use it, then it's able like it's you know you're able to get it and use it like a tool to be able to receive. So at the end of the day, is you, you sit on your hands and you sit in there, you be like, ah, oh, you know, I wish I had this. But you see sister so-and-so with the Birkin bag and next thing you know, you envious about that person because they coming through with it, you know, but at the end of the day, you're not saying, you're looking at it as like, okay, that's earthly riches, you know what I mean? And 
Yeah, you know, like yo, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all finish it, but I'm I'm just saying that's my my. Yeah, that's the same thing I've been saying, bro. Like it only matters to people who don't got it. Like people who buying Birkin bags, they self ain't stressed or tripping that sister so and so came in with a Birkin. Great, I got Birkins too. But that sister who's sitting in the back with a guest bag or who went to uh TJ Maxx and got her bag, she gonna be worried about everybody who come in with Birkins because she ain't got one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hey, let me ask y'all something real quick though, because Mike Brown, you brought this up a little while ago. Which I thought was a good point. You're talking about kind of defining riches, right? And, and and wealth, because here in America, we have a certain definition of that, I think, for the most part. But for somebody living in Indonesia or Japan in the you know, Okinawa, you know, in the in the the bushes or whatever, it's a lot different. Like people will look at us yeah. and, and that it's in our condition, you know, we're like middle class, you know, doing okay and <laughs> think we're kids. Yeah, right? Like, we have so much more. So when we're talking about pursuing riches and, and or pursuing, you know, a, a better status in life, are we comparing ourselves? Who should we be comparing ourselves to? Like, am I looking at Bezos exactly. and Musk talking about I need to get there? Or should I be like, yo, look across the pond over there in Haiti and, and whatever. Like, compared to these people, I'm a king, you know? So, so how do we, what do y'all think? Should we where should we do our comparisons at? I mean, it's almost like if you want to make it into the NBA, you're not going to compare yourself to the best player who's who's playing on the blacktop. Like, you're going to look at the games. You're going to study film. You're going to try to compare yourself to somebody who's in the league for real. Like, I mean, and I think there might be a difference in it because, I mean, like, there's, you know, and, and I think we also said it, too, it's a mindset because there's people who live in these other countries and to them, they rich. They got, you know, what they need. They find whatever. And they look at us and say, we have too much, whatever. And I think it's just your mindset. But I I feel like because of where we live at, that, you know, our our <laughs> our aspirations or our goals shouldn't be a uh, uh, bro who, who just got his CDLs from down the street, like, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we really should be trying to, like, like okay, that's, that's what Forbes look like. Okay, I might not get the Forbes, but I'm gonna work because, like, like the like Mike said, like a slack hand brings, you know, poorness. Like laziness brings poorness. So, so if, like I would. You, so if you could get to the G League, that's not good enough. You got to get to the NBA. But that's not where you aspire to be, though. Like if you land in the G League, then fine. But you wasn't trying to get to the G League. I'm gonna be the best, best player <laughs> in the G League. <laughs> <laughs> I hundred percent agree. I, I think that you should shoot for the stars, and I'm and I'm not saying that you ain't never gonna make it to the stars, like you know what I'm saying, anybody. But if you have ambition, that ambition is like a drive within yourself to be better. You know what I'm saying? I, you, you're your own competition at the end of the day when it comes to anything. But it's the fact that you, yeah, you should hundred percent try to shoot for the NBA. But you know, you might stop short at the G League. You know, but look at where you came from. You used to play on the on the blacktop with these dudes that, you know, what I'm saying wasn't able to make it where you're at, and now you in the G hey. League, and now your next next level is what NBA. But hey, it, you ain't gonna make it's it. It's just like just be, it's just like just because I know that I'm the best basketball player on the pod when you know what I'm saying at 100. <laughs> percent It doesn't mean that I'm gonna be like in the NBA. Wow, wow, like wow. I know y'all level. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> It's a difference to it, so I'm not comparing myself to nothing that's real great. I'll just say, <laughs> hey man. But as we get ready to start wrapping things up, man, I wanted to ask y'all like one last question: like, do y'all believe if a man dies and he leaves his children nothing that he's can still that he can still be considered a good man? <laughs> Whoa, that's a good question. Absolutely, a hundred percent. If you don't, wait, hold if on. you don't. We got we got about six minutes left, Mike. You might have opened up a can right. of words. Nah, 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 there's a nah, scripture nah. that actually points to where it says, "Oh man, I can't remember how it goes." But I believe it. I says got it. Hold on, okay. let Mike read. I got it. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It's it's all right. Listen, it's it's one of those things. You're not gonna leave them with completely nothing. You're gonna install them as ch That's okay. What the question you, said. If, nah, okay. When I say all right, what you talk about money wealth. I don't feel like you got to leave them with money because you, you got those people okay, out there. That state, leave, baby. Huh? 
Listen, you got, you got, you got, you got um, fathers out there that can leave their their children millions and millions of dollars, but those kids were growing up into like what completely different what they they could have been as people versus to a man out there who gives their installs principles values and you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all finish but I I think, I don't think you need to leave them with monetary value. In order to for them to be a good father, you know I got a I got a Mike, few clarifying questions real quick. My clarifying kids questions. might not get nothing, y'all just hold good. <laughs> nah, man. Just, you know, I got kid, I got some clarifying questions. Right Wait, Hold your head up. Did he did he have money and then he didn't give it to none of his kids? So then he just gave it somewhere else. Like the question is, if a man dies and leaves no inheritance to his children, can he still be considered a good man? Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, I, I'm glad you clarified that, uh, Leviathan, because I thought I thought he had riches or whatever. So, I kind of will side with what, what what Mike said. If if you riches can be different tools that you need, right, in which you can conquer, which you can conquer, right? Because a lot of times where all we need is just having the right idea, having the right mindset, and then boom, you know what I'm saying? You can you can hit it rich. So the, perhaps maybe the 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 guy, the father didn't have the tools until maybe later in his life i don't know maybe 80 90 and then he left he left that with his kid on his dying bed or whatever so like yeah so i mean when you think about it he he actually left them something so it doesn't necessarily have to be money but i'm gonna let let y'all let y'all go i would say uh I, I mean i honestly agree because i think the most important thing is that you leave this the right principles the light the right uh focus for your children so that they can know and learn to accumulate wealth for themselves because you don't want them to just live off of what you're able to provide for them because then that may not last but ultimately you know wealth can be gone in the blink of an eye it says that in proverbs 23 4 and 5 so you don't want to put all your faith and trust in that you gotta definitely DJ have Man the right principles fish. exactly there you go you know what i'm saying say it again dj teach a man to fish he eat for wait go ahead Proverbs 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's That's children. Yeah. But the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. I, could, I had a better so, feeling. That's not a good look, man. It's not a good look. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I think we, we definitely brought the essence out of, you know what I'm saying, all that needs to be said that and um, as we start wrapping it up, man, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all want to leave the people with any good nuggets, financial-wise, life-wise. Let me just say, you know, seek seek first the kingdom of heaven. And whatever wealth you do accumulate, you know, use it to bless others. That's what's most important. Yeah, nah, I want to tack on to that. Just, you know, find that right balance. As y'all know me, I'm the balance guy. You know, Abraham was one of the richest men in that ever lived, but he was also considered the father of faith. So you can do both. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, hey, my thing is this, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? No matter what God gives you, you should be able to be able to bless others because that's the true way of being able to, you know, have more come back to you is being able to give. If your fist is always closed and your hands is always closed, no matter how much you have, you'll never be able to hold on to it. So share what you are blessed with with others, because that's the only way that we can truly be wealthy in life as far as finances and resources go. This has been another episode of the Hold Your Point crew with the Hold Your Point podcast, all that good stuff. And until next time, man, we out of here.